Okay, so here we have the material parameter collections created. Let's go in and create a new input. And we'll call it like, well, we'll take our say hi one and we'll change it to change cab color. And we can set that to one, that's fine. Okay, make sure that in our character, say hi event is no longer there. Print string we don't need. Uh, so we're saying uh, change cabinet color. And we're going to then take this. When we hit one, that will change our cabinet color. What we need to do is change the parameter that's affecting the color of this material. So how can we do that? Let's take a look. So out of here, we can, when we press the change cab color button, which is one, we can say set parameter, set vector parameter value. Okay, and this gives us some options here. We can choose which collection we're trying to address, and that is the editable materials. And then which parameter name are we trying to change, and that's just the cabinet color. There's only one in there. Now the question is, what do we want to set it to? Okay, and to get that, we actually need to come out of here and say get parameter value, get vector parameter value, right? And we need to go into the, the color collection and get one of our values. So let's change it to red. We just set that here. And then this node will spit out a certain value. It'll spit out the linear color structure of this parameter after we have set it to red. And then we can take this and string it to there. Okay, so we're, we're referencing our collection, setting it to red, and then taking that setting and plugging it into the set vector parameter value of our editable materials collection parameter cab color. Okay, so that's a lot to take in. Really, we're just referencing our color collection in order to set the color of our cabinet color parameter in the other collection we made. So two collections, and the one is referencing the other. So if we save, compile. Now, if we go in and play, if we look over here and if we hit one, our cabinets change colors, right? So this is not super interesting, except that we can also toggle through as many colors as we want, right? Because we can keep setting that parameter to different values from our color collection. So let's escape out of there and let's open it again. And remember, part of what's going on here is that this character is set to automatically receive inputs. And so when we hit one of our input buttons, then the, the scene will respond because that character can receive inputs. If you made a blueprint from scratch, you would need to make sure that it is receiving inputs also. Or else when you hit a button, it isn't even going to be looking for an event and it won't react to it. The character, of course, does. Okay, so keep that in mind. So how can we make it toggle through all of these? Well, we can, well, here's one way to do it. There's probably multiple ways. What I'm going to do is set up a variable and I'm going to just call it a count. So we'll call it color count. And we're just going to set it to an integer, just a number that counts. And we want to compile so that we can set a default and we'll make sure that the default of it is set to zero. So first it's set to zero. Let's bring it out here and get the color count. Of course, it's going to be zero at first. Then we can do, when this is pressed, we can increment the integer, which gives you a little plus plus mark. And that just means add one to the current count of color count. So it starts at zero, then it runs. When I run this action, it goes through here and adds one to it. So now it becomes one. Now we need to check to make sure, well, let's just go with this for right now. We want to then run out of here a switch on integer. And that gives us the ability to do different things depending on what this integer is equal to. So let's add some pins here. We have four colors, so that will be our four colors right there. And if the color count is set to zero, oh, let's one other thing. So after this comes in here and adds one to itself, we then get the output right here and we can plug that into here. So that tells us 
which one of these we should run. So it starts at zero, runs through here, goes to one. Now it comes in here and it's gonna run one, right? And on one, we want this to happen. On two, let's just select these, control C to copy and control paste. On two, we want this to happen again, except this time we want it to change to blue. On three, we want it to change to gray. And on zero, we want it to change to black. Okay, so let's see what we get now. Remember, it's zero first, but it's not actually running this because we haven't done the input yet. So it's just looking at the default, which is black, right? So when we play, it should be black. Then we hit one and it goes to red, then blue, then gray, but it's not going back to black. Why is that? Well, because it never reset to zero. So if we go back into our character, we went all the way through here and then we went to four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's nothing there, so it wasn't doing anything. So what we need to do is make sure that once it gets above three, to reset to zero. And we'll do that in here by putting a branch in and saying int greater than, if the integer coming from here actually coming from this node is greater than three and then run it into here. So if that's true, we want to then set color count back to zero, right? If it's true that it's greater than three, set it to zero and then run it into here. If it's false, then just run it directly into here. And the selection, the number, will be coming from, again, color count. Okay, so if that's hard to follow, what happens is we press the button. It looks at the color count, which starts at zero. It adds one to it. Now we're at one. That means it goes this way. If, as long as it's not four or anything greater than three, it will say false, and it will go here and get whatever the color count is probably the same as whatever this was, and it will run it. If it is greater than three, then it will no longer look back to here. It will go up here and say true and set it back to zero, and then grab it, a reference to it again, which is now gonna be set to zero, and then it'll run. Okay, so that's just controlling, that's some flow control regarding how these materials will be decided. So let's compile and save. Now let's see if it works. It's black, it's red, it's blue, it's gray, should be black, fingers crossed. Boom, back to black. Okay, so a simple dynamic color change using material collection parameters.